effort underway to clear the names of all accused, convicted, or executed for witchcraft in Massachusetts. In 1648, Margaret Jones, a midwife, became the first person in Massachusetts, the second in New England to be executed for witchcraft, decades before the infamous Salem Witch Trials. Nearly four centuries later, the state and region are still working to come to grips with the scope of its witch trial legacy. The latest effort comes from a group dedicated to clearing the names of all those accused, arrested, or indicted for witchcraft in Massachusetts, whether or not the accusations ended in hanging. The Massachusetts Witch Hunt Justice Project, made up of history buffs and descendants, is hoping to persuade the state to take a fuller reckoning of its early history, according to Josh Hutchinson, the group's leader. Hundreds of individuals were accused of witchcraft in what would become the Commonwealth of Massachusetts between 1638 and 1693. While much attention has focused on clearing the names of those put to death in Salem, most of those caught up in witch trials throughout the 1600s have largely been ignored, including five women hanged for witchcraft in Boston between 1648 and 1688. It's important that we correct the injustices of the past, said Hutchinson, who noted he counts both accusers and victims among his ancestors. For now, the group has been collecting signatures for a petition, which, as of Tuesday, has about 700 signatures, but hopes to take their case to the State House. The Witch Justice Group helped successfully spearhead a similar effort in Connecticut, home of the first person executed for witchcraft in the American colonies in 1647, also young. The last witchcraft trial in Connecticut happened in 1697 and ended with the charges being dismissed. According to the Connecticut Judicial Branch Law Libraries, Bible references were used to assert the crime's legitimacy. Connecticut state senators in May voted by 34-1 to absolve 12 women and men convicted of witchcraft, 11 of whom were executed more than 370 years ago and apologize for the miscarriage of justice that occurred over a dark 15-year period of the state's colonial history. Massachusetts has already made efforts to come to terms with its history of witch trials, proceedings that allowed spectral evidence in which victims could testify that the accused harmed them in a dream or vision. That effort began almost immediately when Samuel Sewell, a judge in the 1692-1693 Salem Witch Trials issued a public confession in a Boston church five years later, taking the blame and shame of the trials and asking for forgiveness. In 1711, colonial leaders passed a bill clearing the names of some convicted in Salem. In 1957, the state legislature issued a kind of apology for Anne Pudeter and others who were indicted, tried, found guilty, sentenced to death, and executed in 1692 for witchcraft. In 2022, lawmakers exonerated Elizabeth Johnson Jr., clearing her name 329 years after she was convicted of witchcraft in 1693 and sentenced to death at the height of the Salem Witch Trials. Johnson is believed to be the last accused Salem witch to have her conviction set aside. Other states have worked to confront similar histories. In Pownall, Vermont, a town that borders Massachusetts and New York, a dedication ceremony was held last month for a historical marker, recognizing the survivor of Vermont's only recorded witch trial. Accusers believed witches floated, but Krieger sank and was saved, the marker states. The Septa 16 dedication ceremony included a witch's walk, in which people dressed as witches walked across a bridge to the marker site along the Hoosick River. I am sure Widow Krieger would have been quite happy to join our witches' walk today in defiance of those who feel they have the right to accuse someone they feel looks different, acts different, or has a personality that they might find odd of being a witch, said Joyce Held, a member of the Pownall Historical Society, which worked with the Bennington Museum to get the marker. Other countries have attempted to atone for a history of persecuting people as witches. Last year, Scotland's Prime Minister issued a formal apology to the estimated 4,000 Scots, mostly women who were accused of witchcraft up until 1736. Of the 4,000, about 2,500 were killed. 